giant trees of Florida, Ford, Edison, and the meth fire of 2012. On the dark night of January 16, 2012, a Florida woman was looking for a place to smoke her meth in peace. She came upon a large tree and discovered an entrance to its hollow trunk. There, in the middle of the tree, she attempted to pack her ice pipe, but the black night made it impossible to see. The woman then collected some debris and twigs and made a small fire on the ground, thus illuminating her materials. She began to smoke and slip into a sweet icy haze, but suddenly realized the small fire she had started was now much, much bigger. Instead of attempting to put out the growing fire, she took some pictures and fled the scene. The flames climbed up the hollow core of the trunk and burned the tree from the inside out. Nobody else would know what had been done until it was far too late. The tree that she had burned to the ground was the fifth oldest tree in the world. A 125-foot bald cypress estimated to be around 3,500 years old. Before being arrested, she was quoted as saying, I can't believe I burned down a tree older than Jesus. This presentation will cover the presence of giant and ancient trees in Old Florida, as well as their role in the Old World. Now enjoy. Welcome to Florida, baby. Introducing Dr. Narco Longo. Dave, some folks are disappointed with the punishment that this woman re received. Well, that's right. You know, state prosecutors insist they did not cut a deal with this tree-burning suspect. In fact, they say that Sarah Barnes basically walked into court. She pled no contest to the judge, and she was immediately sentenced. But for the folks who simply loved the big tree and what it stood for, they say a suspended prison sentence and probation just doesn't add up. Betty Rendon's family has a lengthy history with Seminole County's Big Tree. We discovered Big Tree Park shortly after we moved here. She remembers her grandkids when they first saw the fire. They cried. They cried when they knew that that the senator had burned. They weren't the only ones. Sarah Barnes was arrested, accused of setting the fire so she could see better while allegedly using drugs in the park. She just pleaded no contest to the judge and was sentenced. Two and a half years in prison, suspended, as long as she successfully completes five years of probation, 250 hours of manual labor, pays $14,000 in fines and costs, and she must undergo substance abuse evaluation. And Betty Rendon, a former teacher, was less than satisfied to hear any talk of probation. I also taught them that for every action there are consequences. And this was a terrible consequence. This is a consequence that we cannot bring back. We cannot fix. Believe it or not, I have seen various people online accuse Miss Barnes of practicing black magic and Satanism. But there's really not anything to substantiate that, apart from people leaving comments that they knew her or saw some pictures from her laptop. Regardless, it makes one wonder how she got off so easy. We know fires in places like California are being set by radical partisans. Is it ridiculous to think the senator could have been targeted? After all, it was an evil act driven by a drug that absolutely makes people susceptible to demonic influence. It's also rather alarming to learn that cypress trees are actually a fire-dependent species and are adopted to survive substantial forest fires due to their non-combustive bark and extremely wet habitat. 
This makes sense considering they are close relatives to the California redwoods, who are regularly engulfed in flames and survive with ease. So how and why did the senator ignite so easily? Luckily, the senator had a companion tree named Lady Liberty. She is around 2,000 years old and stands 82 feet. She will one day catch up to where the senator left off. The girthiest tree in Florida is also a bald cypress, pictured here. These trees are found all across the southeastern United States. Here are some large specimens from other states. They are regarded as the redwoods of the east coast and are, as mentioned earlier, close relatives. And though not quite as big, they are often older than the redwoods of California. The Kapok tree, native to the Caribbean and South America, served as the ancestral tree for the Maya and Aztec. The mighty tree was believed to be the link between the heavens above, earth in the middle, and the worlds below. There is a massive Kapok tree on Palm Beach Island that is 186 years old. These trees are not native to Florida, but this one was allegedly planted in the 1830s in South America, then transplanted to Florida in the 1890s by Standard Oil tycoon Henry Flagler. This is the same man who likely passed off ancient Moorish structures of Florida as his own in the 1880s. The tree is about a hundred yards from his private Palm Beach villa named Whitehall. The mansion is technically a four-sided star fort with a bastion in each corner. It has been said this unusually large tree is an example of hypergrowth, where unknown factors lead to the outpacing of older trees by a younger one. This seems unlikely to me. The Kapok may be native to Florida after all. Interestingly, kapok trees, and sometimes banyans, are often transplanted across Florida. These trees have their extensive branches lopped off, their trunks cut up in a Frankenstein fashion, and then replanted, but these procedures are not always successful. Are giant ancestral trees like these being obscured or even destroyed on purpose? I tend to think so. The banyan tree serves the same archetype in East Asia. These trees grow up to 200 feet tall, but can grow to 1,000 feet wide due to their multiple trunks and stalks. Krishna was said to have been laid to rest on the leaf of a banyan tree. The Buddha sat under a banyan for 49 days and attained enlightenment. This specific tree, known as the Mahabodhi tree, is still alive today and located in Bihar, India. It is around 2,500 years old. The history of the banyan tree in Florida is rather murky. It is claimed that Thomas Edison planted the first banyan in Florida, but banyans, figs, and ficuses all belong to the same family. The shortleaf fig and strangler fig are both considered native to Florida, while the Indian banyan and Indian rubber trees are not. Edison allegedly planted his Indian banyan in 1925. It was a gift from rubber tycoon Harvey Firestone. However, pictures exist of mature banyans from India present in Florida 30 years prior and on the opposite coast from where Edison planted his. And by 1925, the Indian banyan was well established with many mature specimens found all over the southeast coast of Florida.
What is most odd about Edison's banyan is that it mysteriously outpaced others much older than it and is today believed to be one of the largest in the world. Some place it at third. Is it really as young as we are led to believe? The location of the tree is the Edison and Ford Winter Estates near Fort Myers, Florida. It is a little known fact that Thomas Edison and Henry Ford were actually best friends who initially road tripped together in new Ford Model T's from 1914 to 1925, accompanied by rubber tycoon Harvey Firestone and writer John Burroughs. This robber baron road trip seemed like a real tour de tartaria. They became fixated on Florida with Edison and Ford later moving in together. They were allegedly very interested in tropical plants and the prospect of creating rubber from various trees in Florida, both local and exotic. Keep in mind it was rubber tycoon Harvey Firestone that allegedly gifted Edison his first Indian banyan, often referred to as an Indian rubber. Both Ford and Firestone are personally responsible for the destruction of much of the Amazon and other rainforests. Is it absurd to think they also had bad intentions when coming to Florida? I can think of many ways that falsifying the history of potentially industry-shifting trees might benefit these robber barons. It should be noted that there are multiple record-holding trees on the grounds of the Edison and Ford Winter Estates. There is Edison's Banyan, the largest in the continental United States. There is a Buddha coconut, an Alexander palm, an Indian coral tree, a Puerto Rican hat palm, and a blue maho, all the largest in Florida at one point in time. The Baobab is a giant tree species regarded as the spiritual anchor of certain cultures of Africa. This is the tree fantastically depicted in the Madagascar cartoons. It is commonly called a sausage tree and is not native to Florida, allegedly being introduced in the 1930s by David Fairchild. Fairchild, a botanist, is personally credited with the introduction of 200,000 exotic plant species to the United States. He opened a botanical garden in Florida in 1938, pictured here. The oldest live oak in Florida, and possibly America, was christened the Fairchild Oak in honor of David. It is estimated to be between 2 and 2.5 thousand years old, making it older than the oaks of Europe. As a born and raised Floridian, I can assure you this information is not given to us in school. Why is this so? Florida is also one of the only places in the world where you can find oaks thriving among dense tropical vegetation. Here are some exceptional live oaks found in Florida. The oak was the patron tree of the Indo-European Aryan peoples. Interestingly, the tree was revered on both sides of the Atlantic. It was always associated with the supreme thunder god, such as Zeus and his equivalents, Jupiter, Thor, the Thunderbird of America, and others. 
The Druids were especially fond of oaks, and would congregate and practice their magic in sacred oak groves. This is very reminiscent of Bohemian Grove, where gigantic redwood trees are utilized to increase the potency of occult rituals. The Vikings built ships from their oaks in Europe, and were also in the Americas before Columbus. Before we wrap up, we should discuss how 1925 seemed to be a very important year in the world of trees. First, Edison planted his Indian banyan, possibly a sapling from the great Mahabodhi tree. Number two, the senator, the 3,500-year-old bald cypress in Longwood, had its height reduced 40 feet by an alleged hurricane. And three, the great banyan in India, the largest tree in the world, had its primary trunk amputated. All of this, we are told, happened in the year 1925.